Hey guys, welcome to my first video. Today, I'm going to explain how to build a Serpent 989 gearbox and share with you some of my tips and tricks to make sure that you have a two speed that changes perfectly every time. Cheers. So the equipment you're gonna need is a two mil Allen driver, sharp exacto or knife, some Loctite, just some light duty, a little bit of wet and dry sandpaper, and a paint pen or sharpie of a uh, light colour. Okay, so first step, I like to pre-thread all my screws. So the first thing we'll do is we'll grab the uh, grub screws and pre-thread our shoes. You want to make sure that the grub screw goes in straight and not angled and that it goes all the way through. They're quite tight sometimes, so you need a little bit of effort. So we'll do that to both. Let's make sure that nice and straight. As a precaution, you can check that the grub screw's gone through the other side nicely. So that's our set screws done. Then we want to do our 2.5mm adjusting screws. Again, just making sure they're nice and parallel with the hole. This will save a lot of trouble uh, with adjusting the springs on final assembly to make sure that the screw's not tight on the thread and so you can feel when it bottoms out on the spring when you're doing your adjustment. It's one down. Make sure they're perfect. Can probably use a tap, however, I've done that once before and went a little bit too far, and the adjusting screws are way too loose, so I had to scrap that one. I prefer just to use the screw now. Alright, so once we've pre threaded, on to putting our adapter onto our shaft. Pretty straightforward. Adapter goes straight on. Line our holes up. Play our pin through here. Just want to get it nice in the middle. No, uh, don't have the pin hanging out. This is where our Loctite comes into. Definitely want to use a bit of Loctite on this scrub screw. Once it's in, you don't want it coming out. I think that uh, our new designed two speed with the connected to the shaft is a really good design feature. It means there's no slop in the adapter and gives a consistent um, shift and two speed adjustment every time. So once we've got our adapter on, we can um, just put on our shoes. Now these do go a specific way. Um, in your manual when you're building it, it will show on the diagram the um, big shoe facing this way. Before we do that, we want to put our little rollers in. can use a little bit of um, bearing grease on the rollers if you like. Definitely not too much because you don't want that spraying out on your shoe. While we're here, we'll just clean up where we've started our thread. You can see that there's just a small little burr. Just remove this with your Sharpie. Sorry, exacto knife. So it's with both the shoes. When you put a thread in a hole, it can uh, sometimes mushroom. We want this to sit nice and flat when it's together. 
as I said, shoe goes on like that. All right. Then we set that down there. We're going to take our springs and our adjustment screws. I'm just going to start each one. So just let it take up a little bit and you want to put the second one in. Oh, we've missed a step. Before we do that, a little trick of the trade. Just colour the top of your screw in with the light coloured paint marker. This way, if your mechanic or you in the pits want to adjust your two speed on the fly without taking it apart, it's much easier to see a silver screw in a black hole than the other way around. So sometimes I like to do just one screw, that way I know that um, once I've done the silver one, I need to do the next colour when you're doing the adjustment. Saves a bit of confusion in the heat of the moment if you need to do an adjustment before a race. So you can see that we've got a uh, black screw in there and our silver screw. So you just want to evenly do these two screws up. Don't do them too fast or too hard. We don't want to break the spring because that has been known to happen. So you'll feel the spring and hear it start to click as the screw engages on it. Just do them up a couple of turns each either side. You'll start to feel it get tight. Just go nice and slow. Both sides. And we just want to nip them up and bottom the spring out without putting any pressure to break the spring. This will set the spring at its bottom point, which is zero. Now from here, I like to start at five turns out. That will make sure that when you install your two speed and you're running it in for the first time, that you'll get a shift point and you'll be able to run it in uh, I usually just take note of where the uh, flat is on the driver and go out five turns from there. So that's five on that side. And five on that side. Alright, so our springs should be set nice and even, both sides. It's very crucial that that setting is the same either side. Um, you can get your vernies if you want and measure the distance of the screw. Um, some people find that accurate. I usually like to bottom the spring out because the springs can be manufactured differently sometimes. Um, there's personal preference, but just as long as they're equal, side to side as best you can, that's what we're looking for. So now we're going to put our set screws in. And because we pre-threaded it earlier, nice and easy. So on one side, you want to adjust your set screw in until you start to see a small gap form in the shoe. And you know the set screw has bottomed out on the adapter. So from there, just back it off a little bit and we'll come back to that in a second. And we'll do our other side. Same idea, adjust it until you see a gap. I'll just make the gap a bit bigger so you can see in the video, there we are, and we back that off. Now this is extremely crucial for your first time. Um, once this is set and it's equal, usually you don't have to worry about it. So what you want to look at here is the gap from the shoe and the adapter in this area here. Um, because the shoes are brand new, we don't want to see a gap here yet. So as your shoes wear, um, you'll need to adjust this grub screw and there'll be gaps here which you can measure the adjustment from but for the moment we want to make sure that the gap here and on the other side are perfectly equal and the shoe is centered to the shaft so make sure that the two speed is always super consistent 
The way I usually do it is I just play around with screwing one side in, getting a gap, and then backing it off a little bit. And you can tell that the, that the shoe is in the middle. When we put the two-speed housing on, you'll be able to see um, better if the shoe is in the center of the shaft uh, because it will touch the, the housing if it's not. So once we've set that, we want to go through it and deburr it. For me, this is super important, um, making sure that none of the shoe is going to touch the housing, um, giving you an early shift or inconsistent shift on a bump or areas like that. So what I usually do is I grab my knife and I just run it around the corner and radius off the shoes, especially on the uh, part where the shoes meet. Do this for both sides, the front and the rear. Once you've hit it with a knife, you then can just make sure, go around each of the ledge, make sure that you don't have any flashing from moulds or little bits. So that's looking pretty good. We want to do the back side as well. pretty important to make sure that you get it pretty even. You want to make sure the shoe is balanced and it's going to be the same as it rotates through there. It does do a few RPM. So once we've done that, get your bit of uh, wet and dry and just go around and smooth out those corners a little bit. Make sure there's no leftover bits of shoe or burr. Again, whole idea is just to make sure that when the shoe is new, it's not going to touch that housing. Sometimes when doing your first two speed on a new car with a new motor, it's really hard to sometimes tell whether it's shifting gears or it's easy to get confused. So making sure that you build it right and spend the time on it now is crucial. Makes it a lot easier later. Once I've done that, I'll go around the shoe and just give it a little, little touch up. Make sure we've got no burrs. It's looking pretty good. We'll just grab our rag. Got a compressor, give it a good blowdown, and now we've got our D Bird shoes ready to go. So, from there, another little tip the bearings that come in the kit are greased, so they've got a rubber shield and they are greased. What I would strongly recommend, uh, it is personal preference, but is to take the shields off and remove the grease. Um, you can do this with some alcohol or petrol, um, make sure you dry them out and also make sure that you put at least a drop of bearing oil in it before you put them back in. Um, not too much oil because you don't want it spraying out onto the shoe, but the grease will come out of the bearing at some point and make your two speed slip or not engage. So we just simply install the bearings. This is just following the uh, normal kit. We'll pretend we did those bearings. Good idea always also to wash your aluminium parts on the car down with a bit of brake cleaner or metho. Just gets rid of anything that might be contaminating it. You don't want that on your two speed shoes to get into the plastic. And just see a couple of 2.5 screws up, nice and even. All right, so the first gear is quite self-explanatory. There is a little trick that um, we do 
to put a little bit less pressure on the one way, even though it might be minuscule, it's good practice to do it anyways. The gears uh, sometimes can be tight over the one way there. So I just like to either get a big reamer if you've got one, or just grab your exacto again, and just give the corners of the spur gear just a little cut. Let's put a little bit less pressure on the uh, one way and give you a little bit more RPM, see on the back straight. In motor racing, every little bit helps. That slides in there nicely. If you can get yourself some uh, titanium Aramac screws or aluminium, definitely suggest using them for your screws. Lower that uh, centrifugal mass a little bit. Again, every little bit helps. Okay, so from here, we now want to make sure that our housing is not going to touch our two-speed shoes from assembly. Um, obviously, we can just slide it on, give it a spin. You'll feel it if it is touching. Um, if it is touching, you'll need to adjust or deburr your shoes more. Let's see if we can get a good close-up on that one. You can see when we rotate if that light gap stays remains the same as we go around means your shoe is in the central position, which this one is uh, pretty close. Close and acceptable. So it spins nicely with not touching the shaft or the housing. That's perfect. Now with the one-way, really crucial. They do come pre-greased from the factory. You can see that I've uh, just thrown that on and there's some grease on the outer edge here. Give it a good spin. And then make sure, grab your rag, and you wipe off the excess grease really critical that you do this from a new build that way you can ensure that if the gearbox doesn't change that it's not going to be because of the grease or oil that is from your one-way bearing one-way bearings and maintain maintain sorry maintainable part um, you'll need to oil it regularly i prefer to use the um, exceed or huddy one-way oil and only one drop on the uh, bearing spin it up on the shaft and then wipe the shaft clean. It's a uh, guaranteed way to ensure no oil gets in that um, crucial two-speed. From there, circle clip on, and you're guaranteed to have a perfectly working two-speed. Cheers, thanks for watching.